Welcome to the worship service for Valois United Church in Point Claire, Quebec on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. On behalf of the church, I thank you for your support and also for special gifts given in memory today, Dave McGovern, Tony Kelmar, and Dr. Roger Bider. We gather now to worship God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We are standing at the gate, O loving shepherd, not sure about the journey, but you have called our names, and in your voice we hear your love and commitment to our care and well-being. Bring us safely on our journeys and strengthen us, that we might serve you in all that we do. Receive our adoration and our praise this day. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. The reading today comes from John's Gospel. Chapter 10, verses 1 to 10, Jesus has been teaching, and he says, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. One who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. In this passage from John, Jesus says that he's come so that his sheep, his followers, all of us, may have life and have it abundantly. Life is good, desirable, and important. I mean, that's why we all took a, a pause during this pandemic, right? We all wanted to live and, and also preserve life, because life is good, and desirable, and important. Well, how much more so, then, abundant life? It is the opportunity to thrive, to flourish, to have a sense of meaning, purpose, value, and fulfillment, to know and be known, accept and be accepted. We regularly make all kinds of little sacrifices in the hope of earning or achieving or, or purchasing the good life. But what we're looking for is abundant life. You know, Amazon can give us stuff, things that come right to our door even in this pandemic. Little every person rings the doorbell, walks away, and after we wipe down the package, we can find inside a, a pair of Nike running shoes or or maybe noise-canceling headphones, or a book or two. Now, we will probably not find puzzles or PPE. Those seem to be beyond Amazon these days. I mean, they and our government are God, after all. But Amazon can bring us the stuff that money can buy. And the stuff may well be useful. We've got to get everyone back to work. I mean, there's a very big push on about that these days. We've got to get everybody back to work. Yes, we know the virus will kill some people. We know that, they say, but we can't wait until it's safe. Got to fix the economy and get the stuff as soon as possible right now. Yes, I know, we made a huge mistake with the elderly and didn't pay people enough to do the work and didn't supply proper PPE and most of our deaths were there in nursing homes and CHSLDs. But you should trust us because we know what we're doing. Now we want to be first, send those kids back to school so their parents can go to work, so that we can all buy stuff. No point waiting. Stuff and abundant life, They're not the same thing. You know, until this virus, we all bought a lot of stuff and most of us found ourselves during this time buying what we need instead, because things like recreational buying, well, it just hasn't been possible. And I wonder if we'll be different in the future, if we learn from this, will we continue to buy as much stuff in the days that lie ahead? 
stuff can't provide abundant life because those things are not the same. Stuff and the abundant life, the life of meaning, purpose, and value that we all seek. So here we are, the time to reflect. What if we have been seeking meaning and fulfillment, abundant life through stuff? Well, it certainly isn't working right now. The economy's in the dumpster. So what can we do to alter the life that we have so that we can have a better one in the future? One touched and filled with abundant living. You know, in some sense, we've been cheated, or maybe we cheated ourselves, really, by settling for something less than abundant life. But what if this pause that we have had, what if this, this pause that the virus has required is an opportunity, a, a gateway to, to something better, to abundant living? I mean, Jesus said very truly, I'm a gate for the sheep. I mean, what if this is a gateway moment for us? What if we have an opportunity, even in the midst of very difficult and terrible things, to make our daily lives better? I mean, what if as we pause, we have an opportunity to look at the choices that we've been making? I mean, do our ways of life, the, the things that we've relied upon, bring us authentic, abundant living? Are we satisfied? I mean, lately we've been spending a lot of time with the people that we love. Playing Scrabble, board games, online with friends and in person in households. Somebody even told me we're playing bridge online. We've been walking and enjoying the gifts of creation, birds and sunshine. Somebody even told me how they enjoyed raking the leaves in the front yard of the church. And that one blew me away. I didn't know anybody liked raking leaves. And I was thinking, maybe I should put a sign on my front lawn. Come. Rick provided, enjoy, and see if I get any takers. We're cooking, baking at home because we haven't been going out as much. I mean, if you don't believe me, just try and find yeast or flour at the grocery store on one of your every two week shoppings. We've been reading, doing crosswords, watching old movies, doing jigsaw puzzles, or laughing through episode 4 billion on Seinfeld. We've been treasuring conversations on the phone, or, or maybe on Zoom. I mean, we have a coffee hour at the church on Wednesdays that's by, brought to us through Zoom, and different people come to it week by week. I mean, one week we recommended TV and, and movie choices to each other. Another week we shared what we loved doing when we were five. Another week we, we talked about the best vacation we ever had. One week Harry broke out his guitar and sang Amazing Grace for us, and last week, coffee hour, we shared about our hobbies, and little Alex, age seven, shared a story he had written, and we loved it. And we helped Mason with homework, and we loved doing that, too. We cheered for those who were making hats and masks for hospital and residence workers. When we reflected on our hobbies, all of them different, we found out that we were all united in the creativity, commitment, love, joy, fun, and recreation that they all brought. We were also bound together in community as we talked about it. During these days, and instead of spending our time on shopping and stuff, we have talked to strangers on sidewalks, unconcerned about which language we will use, English or French or something else. We just wave at each other on our walks if we don't know which one to pick. We've had beautiful concerts every single day. Judy, our musician at the church, has played gorgeous pieces for us. And so have celebrities, too. We've gotten to see them in stubble beards or sweats in their own houses instead of as the, the carefully concocted images that we are usually given. We've been invited into other people's homes online, dinners with friends, each with their own meal in their own place, a FaceTime dinner shared. Has anyone ever watched Dinner with the Gaffigans on YouTube? It's the family of Jim Gaffigan, the, the comedian. And it's really just an ordinary family hanging out with simple fare on the table and very ordinary conversations around that table in New York City and an opportunity to donate money to feed workers in the front lines, firefighters and nurses and police. Jim Gaffigan, the comedian, is only half as funny as his wife and kids are when they generously get together this way. You know, I haven't regretted any of those things, and maybe you haven't either. And many other situations and things too because they're all part of that abundant life that that maybe we have not been having when we spend an unhealthy amount of time accumulating and shopping instead 
And maybe reflecting on that, and because we are now even more aware of our mortality because of the COVID virus, and we don't want to waste our days, we can hear that voice inside us all that seeks abundant life. Apparently, we have all been looking for that. There is a gate and a shepherd who knows us and understands that need in us as human beings, treasures us and offers abundant life. And maybe Jesus, our gate, is calling us through the gate to a better life, to abundant life. Abundant life, which Jesus says he's all about for our benefit. That life here that is described as flowing from relationship with Jesus and through him with God and with each other because apparently only lost sheep are the ones who are alone. Abundant life, it's, it's not something that we can earn or achieve or buy. It's not like stuff. Rather, it's a gift, a gift of God who loves us, who in Christ is redeeming our lives. Yes, there are so many thieves and bandits in this world who would rob us of life, who would cheat us of abundance, and we might even do it to ourselves. And so Jesus comes as gatekeeper and good shepherd, the one who knows the sheep intimately and truly, and who calls us by name so that we may believe and receive wonderful truth about God's great love for us and the gift of abundant life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Beloved, help us approach the gate with confidence. Let us walk through from fears and doubts into the lands of hope and growth and peace, trusting in the shepherd who seeks, guides, and cares for us. Yes, in so many ways we are stubborn, and yet you gently call our names reminding us of your eternal love. Here and now we place before you those near and dear to us, seeking your healing grace and mercy. Help us to remember that we also stand in need of your grace and mercy. Today, O oh God, we pray for those affected by coronavirus, people who are sick. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, those who have lost their jobs, for those who are grieving violence in Nova Scotia and victims of violence in their own homes in Montreal and victims of flooding in Fort McMurray in the midst of all of this too. We pray for those who have lost their sense that things will get better and those who are feeling apprehensive in America and here as, as politicians in haste rush to open things again. Touch the pain and grief Speak to the anger, hurt, fear, and deep sadness. Soothe and touch lies with your peace and hope, O oh God. We continue to pray for those in health services, nurses, doctors, caregivers, attendants of all description, who are tired and fearful and anxious. Give them comfort and deep strength and courage, and use their skills and commitments well. I thank you for those who have made masks and surgical hats, little tangible signs of their care. We pray for caring communities of all description, use their love and experience to help in this difficult time. We also pray for teachers returning to school, speak to their justified fears and annoyances. Keep them safe, keep their loved ones safe, vulnerable as they may be too. And keep our precious, precious children safe especially in the midst of the economic choices that the elected are making. Bless their parents. Additionally, we join in prayer with those who have asked us to for the people that they have concern for. We pray for Carol and for Daniel, for John, for David, the Kalmars, Thelma, and Graham too. Use us all day by day and fill us with the compassion of Christ as we Participate in your new life and loving care for the world, O oh God. O oh God, we pray, pray and place our trust in you. May we reach out to others in confidence because of that love that you care for us. This we ask in the name of Christ. Amen. And now come through the gate of joy and hope and move into the world that needs to hear of peace Go in peace to all, bringing good news of Christ's abundant love. Go now in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.